Hello, my name is Chris Kristoff. I'm the Director for Professional Development and School Supports. In the next eight weeks, we're going to transition from covering elements that deal with routine events to elements that address content. Specifically, those elements in Design Question 2 that ask students to navigate through new information. So when we look at Design Question 2, and we know that students are interacting with new knowledge for the first time, we must know that this is new information for the students. Now they may have some prerequisite skills, but the standards we are covering and the lessons we are creating, this is truly new information for students. So the desired effect is so that we use those elements to intentionally plan for them to deepen their understanding and interact with information that they are hearing sometimes for the first time. So if we look at design question two, we know we have eight elements. We have identifying critical information. We have organizing students to interact with that new information. We have previewing that new information and, and then chunking that information into digestible bites or chunks. If you look at the screen behind me, you'll see a graphic that shows those elements in a circular pattern showing that we gradually release for where the teacher directs the information and how students interact with that new information and then have students interact with the new information on a more independent level. So if you look at the first four, they're in red. Those are the elements where the teacher directs the activity. The remaining elements, processing of that new information, elaborating on that new information, recording that new information, and reflecting on that new information is in black because that is where the teacher gradually releases to the students for them to independently work through that new information. So design question two, since it's new information, it is not a buffet where we select certain elements and the strategies within those elements to plan our lessons. Since it's new information, the intent and the desired effect is that we hit all of those elements within that design question. Remember it takes the average adult learner about seven times hearing information presented in seven different ways for them to truly internalize that information. Now we're dealing with students, K through 12 students, we know that it probably will take more times for students to truly understand and deepen that understanding of that information. So when we look at going from six to 13, elements six through 13, we really need to plan intentionally to hit strategies within each of those elements. Now the first question that we, we receive in training where we're talking about this is how do I have time to plan for all of those elements and all of those strategies within a lesson? Well, let's take an example and how easy this is and how, how short amount of time it can take. Now remember, you have to always plan for what is the rigor of this activity, what is the standard level of this activity, um, how much previous knowledge do my students have for this information, but let's just take its new content. Let's take a social studies example. I'm teaching the Civil War, and I want to teach my students the historical facts of the Civil War, but I really want them to understand why the Civil War happened, so causes of the Civil War. So let's say I hand out a five-page document. This is on day one of me, me working into this unit, so it's truly new information. I can do two elements at one time in a very short amount of time. So let's look at elements eight and six. I've given them a five-page document. I'm focusing on element eight, previewing, and I'm focusing on element six, identifying critical information. So I give them a document. I'm going to ask them to read it probably several times, but prior to them reading it, I want to do a quick preview activity with them to identify critical information. I hand out the document. I give each student a highlighter and I work through that document and I say, for the first time that we look at this, before we critically read it, I want you to outline or highlight the following passages in this document. You work through it. Maybe you have them outline or, or identify about six or seven passages from that document and you tell them, now as we begin our first read of this document, when we get to these portions that we've pre-highlighted, that is the really critical information that's going to reach our standard, reach our objective, reach our lesson goal, reach our lesson essential question, whatever it is that you've told them we want to answer by the end of this, of this unit. 
So now you can stop at those various times. You can also organize students into shoulder partners and have them discuss why that information is important according to our learning goal for the day. So really I've now talked about three elements that can happen within a very short amount of time. Think about how long it would take you to preview and highlight that document. Maybe five to seven minutes. Stopping at those times, organizing students into summary partners to, to talk about that. All of that would take really only a few minutes more than just having students read that document in a cold read, not really knowing what is important and what's not. So the planning of this is really no longer than you normally would do, but now you're intentionally planning to hit those elements that are research-based and we know are going to increase the learning of students as they move through new content. So as we begin our School Matters for the next eight weeks, we're going to go one element at a time per week and we're going to start this week with number six, which is identifying critical information. We hope you enjoy.